Hello, so welcome to the new video and this time uh, we test the MG ZS. It is a car that has been sold for some time, for quite some time in the UK, but in, in our country, in the middle of Europe, it's a relatively new car. So, and of course it, it is not a sports car and it is not something that we will talk a lot about uh, the driving experience. We're gonna take it for a test drive and uh, we're gonna see what is the fuel consumption or how noisy it is on the motorway and uh, stuff like this. And cameraman mind, mind coming with me, so let's have a little walk around. So you have these, these it was called Bilet, uh, Bilet headlights. Uh, so yeah, they are actually, from my experience so far, they are really quite, quite good in the night. In the night. Uh, you also have uh, lights for the cornering, as you can see, as you can see here. So these are the halogen head, halogen lights for, for cornering. So that's quite a nice feature. In terms of in terms of wheels, we have uh, I think these are 18 inch wheels, and we have 215 millimeter wide tires. These are 215, I believe 55. Uh, sorry, the conditions are not so good to see, but they should be 215, 55, R18. Uh, in terms of space, being, being still a, quite a small car, it's actually surprisingly, surprisingly practical. Even though the, the wheelbed is not, so, is not so long, I can still sit quite comfortably, uh, quite comfortably inside. The only thing that the sitting position in the back is a little bit more vertical, which is maybe not the greatest thing. Uh, and in terms of some practicality in the back, there is not much. You have some door bins. Uh, you have uh, the USB-C connectors in the back for charging, but no air conditioning in the back of the car. So yeah, that might be a little bit of a little bit of a problem. And you also don't have any any light uh, any light above you uh, to be in the night. So these are the these are the rear lights. They are quite nice. They are again LED, which is which is uh, quite nice. You also have some fake exhaust as it is used for in a lot of cars nowadays so you open you open the you open the boot with the batch of the car and uh, well actually the boot is is quite quite practical and quite big for its class it's 448 liters in in the in, the, in this standard size and you also have a secondary floor under which there should be a spare wheel, but there is nothing. So there is another huge, there is an, another huge, huge tray for for storing things, which is great. And uh, you also have these two door bins on the side. Uh, but in terms of in terms of some hooks and stuff like this, you don't really get it. You don't you don't really get it here. And if you want it to to put the seats down, you have to do it from from the second row, not from the boot. And the storage uh, is quite quite high up uh, from the ground, so you really have to pick things up. But yeah, it's, it's still decently sized, so... So, yeah, that's about it. And if we come to the interior, come with me. So these cars, uh, or the cars in this class, uh, they tend to have a lower quality interior or maybe if we talk about a little bit of a, like a Ford Puma or something like this, they are, they are more expensive than this car so this is really more of a competitor to the Dacia, Dacia Duster yes, so in, in this regard the interior looks actually quite nice you can come here and we have a look so the interior actually looks quite nice because in the Dacia you have this hard touch plastic like here on the door you have it everywhere but in the MG, you actually have uh, you have soft touch materials here. You have some carbon-looking synthetic leather on the dash through all of the interior and also on the door panels. So the, the interior actually looks quite colorful and quite funky. Uh, you also have this synthetic leather here on the on the handles, which is which is actually quite nice. In terms of in terms of build quality, there's nothing to nothing to boast about. And for example, this gear lever here actually feels a little bit like a plastic, like a plastic toy, which I don't really like. And if you put it into sports mode, 
uh, this, this synthetic leather just squeaks when you use it, which doesn't give you uh, some quality, quality feeling. But in terms of equipment, it's actually quite nice. So you have, you have cruise control, you have electrically adjustable seats, which is nice. You don't have a memory function, but you wouldn't expect that in a car like this. You have also electrically adjustable mirrors. You have air conditioning. You have also, come here, you have 360 degree view camera. Let's have a look at this. So this is actually, yeah, it's actually quite nice. For sure, you can also, I think, get it in the Dacia. But yeah, it's, it's a nice feature to have for some people. And you also have uh, hill descent control, which is which is uh, maybe what you would want in an SUV, because even though it's not a four wheel drive, you are going to take it uh, for a bit of off-roading on your trips. So yeah, uh, in, terms of, in terms of usability and practicality, it actually is not, uh, it's not, a, bad, it's not a bad car. Uh, so yeah, let's set off for a trip and let's let's see what the fuel consumption is and well that, that's what i'm mostly interested in ah, so here you open the fuel cap yep. ah. so the car should be having 45 liter fuel tank so let's just put a uh, regular petrol e10 let's see how much we pay So we put in 29 liters and it's gonna cost us 50 euros. All right, so here we are at the cottage. Uh, so we've done around 260 kilometers so far, I believe something like that, maybe 300. Uh, the average consumption so far is 7 liters per 100 kilometers. It was a little bit more when we came to Gilina, which is 200 kilometers on the motorway, up the hill mostly. So yeah, I have to say uh, this car is a little bit inefficient for its class. So. Uh, yeah, it could be a little bit better and compared with the fact that the fuel tank is only 45 liter liters Which is not a lot for a modern day uh, It makes it a little bit a little bit more annoying. So the engine here uh, This is the more more powerful engine that you get with the, the higher higher equipment levels uh, It's a one liter uh, turbocharged three-cylinder three-cylinder engine uh, you can get it with both uh, six-speed manual and the six-speed automatic gearbox as it is in this case um, So yeah, you have the turbo mounted in front of the engine and actually actually the engine sits Well, it sits a little bit a little bit in front of the front axle Which which would make the car a little bit more understeery, but it is okay it could be it could be a little bit better now uh, if i if i was to choose i would definitely take the manual gearbox as this automatic transmission uh, is really not not the greatest uh, it revs the engine quite high if you wanted to if you wanted to change the gear at the lower at the lower rpm you really need to to work very slightly with the accelerator pedal and its response uh, it's not it's not the greatest uh, if you want a little bit of a better response you need to put it in the sports mode which is okay but but still it's not it's not ideal and you also have the option of manual mode in which the response is not always not always great it doesn't always respond to the movement with the lever and also the the synthetic leather on the lever quite quite squeaks as you do the movements so that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, otherwise, if we go if we go uh, to have a look at the back seat, now there is more light than before in the garage. Come and have a look. So the passenger, the cameraman, was a rear passenger. He said there was surprisingly surprisingly much room in the back. It was surprisingly 
surprisingly comfortable compared to the last car he was driven in, which was the BMW X1. And you also have uh, charging capability there. You have two USB-A ports for the phone, which is okay. Although for his new iPhone, the USB-C would be more appropriate. So yeah, but all around, it's a pretty okay car to, to, do, the, to do some journeys in. And the only, the only thing that should be better is bigger tank and a more efficient engine. So that's it. Okay, so it's it might be a time to recap the MG ZS. Well, there are a few things in which this car is maybe not not as good as its competitors. Mainly the the consumption and the aerodynamics. Now on the motorway, it really wasn't anything spectacular. Uh, particularly the the side wind was really really rather bad, and the fuel consumption again. Uh, was 7.5 but if we if we if we were going higher speed as we weren't it would be very easily over 8 liters so that really is not a great thing even though the six speed automatic transmission in this car revs 2.6 thousand rpm uh, at 130 kilometers per hour which is for a six speed automatic transmission really okay I have to say. Otherwise, um, the steering is very nice. The brakes, they have a good feel. You have disc brakes on both axles, which is good. Uh, the suspension, while soft, is rather stable and very comfortable. It wasn't rotating on the connections of the road in the corners. It was really okay, even though it's not the quietest when it's when it's going over bigger bumps so in this regard okay and another aspect in which this car is good is practicality my passenger in the back he was really not complaining at all about anything and the boot was big enough it's actually really really huge enough with 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 its space uh, so yeah this car well does it make it does, it does make sense for 20 grand for 20,000 euros it's a, it's a really great it's a really good offer but in terms of its class you can definitely get a better more grown up car than than the MG is so keep in mind that this car it's a really great value for what you're getting for your money but if you want if you want a really really good car in this class maybe you would look uh, on something different. So yeah, that would be my recap of the MG ZS. And uh, I see you guys in the very next video. Goodbye.